Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. This is the introduction to cloud computing and big data slash data engineering, part F, where we start looking at the Gartner Emerging Technology Hypercycle and Priority Matrices. Okay, folks, we now come on to the famous hypercycles for the first time. They will appear at various times in this talk. Because they're hype cycles for all sorts of different things. They come from Gartner, a well known industry uh, analysis group. And uh, the most famous hype cycles, because they cover everything that is exciting, are the hype cycle for emerging technologies. And they're typically around 40 such technologies. And we go through those for the last three years when we'll find the non trivial changes. All hype cycles have phases, they go up. Huge expectations down to the slough of despond, and then they either disappear into a walla, into the mud, or they march forward into productivity. As well as hype cycles, which are placing them on the expectation curve, and there is a priority matrix basically takes all the items like clouds or or edge computing, they put them in a in a plot of Importance, low, moderate, high, transformational, and time period, not the two, two to five, five to ten, greater than ten. Quantum computing is something which would be greater than ten. And actually, clouds have gone through this entire phase. And effectively, they're no longer in the, in the curves because that they are the norm. I mean, there are more cloud computing than any other computing done today. However, there are features of clouds like blockchain, serverless, machine learning, which are still in the cycle, and, and there are even different parts of machine learning and things like that. Um, and then we do the uh, things for data center infrastructure, which is one of the particular hype cycles, how to build a data center, which is actually clouds are data centers. So it's very relevant to clouds, so there is a separate cloud um, hype cycle. We do that for 2017. And 2018. All right, let's go. Okay, here is a little picture with um, uh, the hype cycle with the uh, things we've already introduced, the uh, different parts, the innovation trigger, peak of inflated expectations, trough of disillusionment, and the slope and slash plateau. Um, it also tries to classify the classes of technologies and where they are. Uh, digital platforms like hyperscale computing is here. We're still far from um, far from the peak of, of, of expectations. AI everywhere is at the top here. Incredibly hyped. Immersive experiences, which are a rather different style of technology, not so relevant for this particular class. They've gone through that hype and they're hopefully going to come along the slope of enlightenment, although they haven't clearly made it in the commercial consumer market yet. All right, so this uh, slide here actually goes through and defines these uh, five areas innovation trigger. Where something happens, a professor makes a breakthrough, makes a press release, gets attention. Then a lot of things, a lot of those happen with lots of professors and lots of companies, and we get to this peak of inflated expectation, over enthusiasm, unrealism, un un uh, slightly flaky at advertising, and. As they say, the only people making money are conference organizers and magazine publishers. Aha, trough of disillusionment. So some technologies pop, reach the trough and they never are seen again. They become unfashionable. The problems with the technologies become clear. Everybody's interest wanes, and there's some um, in a year or so you never hear of the game. But you don't even know it went into the trough. It just disappears. Now, but some of those things whiz through the trough and get to the slope of enlightenment. That's what clouds did. That's what virtualization is doing. 
and uh, they go from being flaky hype things to really pretty solid, uh, very usable things. <clears throat> and they're now entering a very so much very solid uh, commercialization phase with lots of um, lots of um, products coming out. And then when they get to slightly boring and everything is solid, they're on the plateau of productivity and <clears throat> Uh, as it says here, about 20% of the potential customers have actually adopted it. So cloud surpassed 20%. Um, they're nearing actually in a two or three years, they'll be at 50%. All right, let's go. Here we have the event of the year, the hype cycle for emerging technologies 2018. It usually comes out in July of each year, and each and it's always very insightful. This year has especially large number of changes from previous years, previous years, and we will actually go through those changes. As well as the actual hype cycle, which are particular technologies, say like blockchain or general artificial intelligence, uh, Gartner has themes, and these are the five themes which are they have, uh, or trends which they've identified. Democratize AI, artificial intelligence, AI is everywhere. Digitalized ecosystems that we have, electronic um, platforms and environments which govern a whole area, like cars are going to be connected and self-driving and invoked by, you know, by um, Uber and Lyft and things like that. Do it yourself, biohacking. You're gonna get your genes in shape. Um, transparently immersive experiences, the claim that's been made every year for the last 20 years that we're going to be overwhelmed by augmented reality and virtual reality. We will have to see. And finally, ubiquitous infrastructure, that's clouds. Clouds are making a totally continuum of computing. You're swimming through a computer as you walk around. We will look at these trends. All right, democratize artificial intelligence. And AI is disruptive and democratic and universal. And in fact, some of the most interesting areas we're now working on are um, taking AI and just applying it to just in ways we never thought about before. Namely, the secret of high performance computing is probably going to be to use AI to avoid computing. Because uh, your little network can sit there and learn everything and not bother to do the computing. And um, these um, technologies, of course, uh, allow you to run away from lions and uh, make good decisions and, and um, things like that. And uh, detect bad people and endorse good people and all. And uh, they'll invade your cuddly teddy bear and make, make it uh, even more cuddly and uh, Beneficial, and that's as well as uh, making our searches and our buying and our driving and etc. more more um, fruitful. And uh, we have the maker community. The fact that three D printing etc. is revolutionizing the world, and that's all going to be governed by software and AI, which will design these new printable things. And they're just telling the business leaders to look at this and to do it and put it everywhere because it's probably going to work. Because up to now, it's worked everywhere. AI is not, you know, it was amazing, whatever it was. Uh, 30 years ago, AI failed. That was the Japanese fifth generation. Total failure. Now AI is succeeding everywhere, largely just due to somewhat different techniques, although most of the techniques we use now are available. Around that time, it's really more computing and also more data. But you need both, because without more data, you can't use up the computers, and without the computers, you can't process the data. And here are the particular technologies listed here, which we'll see on the later charts. Um, and they're the ones you'd expect both broad AI, cars, robots, and virtual assistants, and so on. All right. Now we have these digitalized. I do not like the word digitalized. I don't quite know why it couldn't be digital. I guess the fact that digitalized implies you've taken an ecosystem and made it digital. 
And that is typically what you've done, what we're doing. We're taking ecosystems that exist, um, like the driving ecosystem, the traffic ecosystem, and we're just invading it with AI and data and advice and decision making and everything. And this is going to apply everything. Everything we do will be digitalized and revolutionized by that digitization. And it's still going to be using the same technical infrastructure, but it will be much more smoothly integrated and it will be applied in a way that's much, much more insidious and powerful. Um, and of course, the organizations that are going to win are the ones that make the same insight. When Facebook, for example, was hardly a brilliant idea, at least I don't think it was. But it was a solid idea and it was an incredible success. And I think when it started, I didn't expect it to be that successful. But it is that successful and they made a brilliant um, insight. So we need the next Facebooks, which are built around a more deeper use of AI. A different, uh, I mean, not just people relating to each other, but people living in, a, in an ecosystem. I don't know, as I, well, I keep mentioning cars and traffic. But um, universities, education is an ecosystem. We need digitalized education will obviously be revolutionary, and that's sort of where MOOCs are probing that area. And um, this, best, this is aimed at business people, not security, and being stopping people grabbing things is important. So blockchain is here, IoT is important, uh, knowledge and semantic graphs are important. Biohacking. So, the transhuman era where you actually hack your biology and your genes. I don't probably, I don't think any of the, any of the people are a bit scared here correctly, uh, correctly in my opinion. And it's still true that we can actually do what we want, which is to design a new heart or, you know, I had, I had a backup surgery. It would be good if I could design a new back. And then I could have just slipped it in and then more on. Instead of which I had a reasonably painful experience and my back is not quite as good as it's meant to be. All right, so anyway, this is pretty exciting. It's what bioengineering in this uh, university will, will do. And um, there's going to be chips which are, bio, which are based on biology, they're like neuromorphic chips. They're chips that do biology. And um, they say augmented reality, and again, they hope that, I mean, I say, I'm really skeptical about augmented reality, because I just don't see people using it. My friends do not use augmented reality, but they use AI, they use Facebook, they use the other thing, and they use connected self-driving cars. But I use AI and augmented reality. Maybe the gaming generation does, but that's a pretty, that's a large, but not universal community, in my opinion. We'll see. Anyway, it's exciting. And here we come on to augmented reality, the transparently immersive experience. And we will, uh, and of course it is true that we're embedding, I mean, today people don't talk. They, they sit there sending short messages to each other. I was at the par Christmas party yesterday, and the two children of the party were actually not talking. But they were tweeting or short messaging on their smartphones. So that's the new life, the tweeted, short messaged life. And um, so, all right, so <coughs> to do the immersive experience, um, we will um, we have to actually to have this thing not just connected by messaging, but actually by embedding people in some virtual space and we have all sorts of interesting um, technologies here. The ubiquitous infrastructure, the continuous collaborative computing environment, that just, they say, is treacle. We live in this computing treacle, which we walk through, and it's treacle is, is grabbing information from us, pumping information into us. That's where we need to do the biohacking, so that, that treacle Computing treacle is embedded in our skin, and just because we don't have to absorb it through a simple 
the eyes and the trivial interfaces like that. Better interfaces. Of course, people talk about brain interfaces, but maybe it can come into our blood or swim around and get to where it's meant to. All right, here we finally have the hype cycle. Here it is, the standard shape. We have all the usual things. We have my favorite, one of my favorites, artificial general intelligence. We have the one that's been here forever. I think ever since I started, quantum computing has been here in the greater than 10 year time scale. We have AI platform as a service here. We have conversational AI platform and autonomous driving level five, which is the most sophisticated. Edge AI. Edge, we know that edge is very important. The world we live in is a cloud plus an edge. And the cloud drives the edge, and the edge drives the cloud. There's also these things like blockchain, which is just fancy security mechanism, which may or may not succeed. Over here we have not quite as powerful um, driving level, which we define later on. Connected homes, smart homes. Here we have augmented reality, which uh, they claim is in the trough of the disillusionment. Uh, you know, I'm sad, the reason why I'm disillusioned is I worked really hard on this in 2000. And it didn't work. Because the internet was too slow in 2000 to support these virtual environments. Now that's no longer true. So I think it's fair to say my cynicism may not be a good thing to do. All right. So here we have the uh, chan the, what the things that are uh, arriving. Uh, we have, I go into the detail there, AI platform as a service. This is the software which enables AI to be put in everywhere. Um, level four autonomous driving, this is really getting quite technical. These are things which self drive when, when it's not too difficult. Uh, level five is when they drive everywhere. Even when there's torrential rain, you can't actually see anything. At least they will probably know to stop. Because I don't think humans can drive in that town. I can't, it's pretty hard. Uh, mobile robots, biochips, we mentioned that in the biohacking discussion. Uh, biotechnology, cultured artificial tissue. We have a lot of work at Indiana University on virtual tissues. Blockchain is a critical security technology, more reliable than previous ones, distributed and robust. We know that carbon nanotubes are important material science innovation. And we have the AI platform represented by Alexa, Google Assistant, and so on. And these are going to be very important. So these, these are actually all of them, or at least most of them use cloud, maybe biochips and biotech down for the rest, and carbon nanotubes, but the rest use clouds. But the clouds are just implicit. Computing treacle. And here we have yet more arriving, Edge AI. That the, the, need, the AI is a, common, is a product of the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge. We have chips that mimic the way humans think. That's the deep neural network ASICs. And those are just specialized hardware implementing convolutional neural nets and things like that. Exoskeletons, these are the technologies that allow you to build biologically relevant things. Here we have generalized drones, flying autonomous vehicles. Um, maybe people will be flying just by flapping their arms. They will become flying autonomous vehicles. Knowledge graphs, this is semantic graphs. This is representation of, of connected knowledge. And by, by vertices, which are knowledge nuggets, and links, which are this knowledge nugget implies other knowledge nuggets, and so on. Um, we have here the difference between virtual and real worlds, because uh, that is actually what we have. And you need to exploit that for maximum effect. Um, we need to have systems that are self healing. We need to have new battery technology. And we need to live in this edge world where our clothes are just riddled with chips, which are feeding things into us and out of us. Pretty exciting. And here we have the things that uh, are leaving. 
Uh, some of them are the bottlers to those to that. That's the least uh, insulting. They matured. They've got so good. I mean, we know clouds matured a while ago. Just ordinary drones. The conversational user interfaces, as in Alexa. Machine learning itself. Now we're looking at applied machine learning or infinitely powerful machine learning. Serverless platform as a service and software or configuration defined security. These are not unimportant. They've just got uh, so good they've reached essentially the plateau of productivity. Some are leaving for a reason. Autonomous vehicles, we've replaced them with a more precise level four and level five. Um, Watson and cognitive computing, well, that was not so successful. Um, it was an idea that IBM pioneered and it had some interesting features, but it didn't actually work. Uh, cognitive experts advisors were in earlier Gartner charts. I'm not certain where they actually came from, but they are effectively virtual assistants, the Google, uh, the Google Assistant and things. Uh, reinforcement learning, they have just decided it's too specialized. Edge computing is just replaced by Edge AI. I don't think that's really that it left, it just got renamed. Uh, this was always a rather pompous thing, taxonomy and ontology management. Pretty good at leftists. We don't. I don't like that type of thing. And augment, human augmentation has become exoskeletons, which is again renamed. So here we are. It's all really exciting. These are all applications of clouds. That's why we're doing clouds, and we're doing clouds for machine learning because it's all AI plus clouds. Thank you. All right. So if you looked at um, 2017. Uh, there are some um, quite interesting changes. This is again not specializing to clouds, just the entirely emerging technologies. Uh, we have some advancing technologies, drones. They've got really, you can see that in the press and I mean web announcements. Drones are getting gone completely commercial. Companies like uh, uh, GoPro of Introduce them and abandon them because they can't compete with the uh, the, the leading companies. Uh, blockchain is getting more and more solid. That's actually more solid than Bitcoin. Its blockchain was introduced sort of to support Bitcoin or rather vice versa. But blockchain is solid distributed database technology. Uh, software defined security, which is really configuration defined security. And brain computer interface, these are technologies. I'm not quite, they're not so relevant for this particular class, um, but they're advancing. But sort of over here are even more interesting things that have come onto the hype cycle which were not there in 2016. 5G, you, you actually see quite a few announcements about that these days. Artificial general intelligence, that I think is pretty interesting that we can actually build a real brain which can do sort of anything. Um, we're not quite there yet, but it's a little alarming, but maybe we will be. We know deep learning, deep reinforcement learning, are these key technologies which have really burst onto the scene and now on the hype cycle. Digital twin, building simulations that um, mimic uh, a particular artifact. Edge computing. Well, that's the Internet of Things and platform to support the Internet of Things. Serverless platform as a service. So I've stressed that's very relevant to this class. It will be still a research issue as far as we're concerned, but uh, it will get, it will, <coughs> it will come into this class more and more. Cognitive computing, that's like Watson from IBM. Uh, that's again AI applied to, to real life problems. So these are good things, good technologies. And here they're all shown on the on the actual um, uh, graph, and we have a lot of technologies here, like some. Uh, here's blockchain, cognitive computing, both of them there. Deep learning, machine learning. Here's connected home. That's the Internet of Things. Um, IoT platform, that's the software to support IoT. GE has Predix, we had the IoT Cloud. It's a pretty mature technology. Um, here we have edge computing, which is very relevant to clouds because edge computing supported 
by clouds. Uh, so here is um, the software defined security, which they we discussed earlier. And they're here on the slope of enlightenment, but getting to virtual reality is starting to, to get uh, pretty mature. And back here we have neuromorphic hardware. Um, some, and um, <coughs> smart dust. And here we have the artificial general intelligence. So this should be compared with <coughs> um, 2016. So what do we have? So we have software defined anything and software defined security. They've now whipped through into this area here. Machine learning is actually around the same point as it was. So that tells you things can sometimes move and sometimes get stuck. Um, blockchain is here, remember it moved over. Um, IoT platform is not so far from where it was in 2017. Here's drones, which are clearly got more, more more mature in 2017. And back here we have general purpose machine intelligence and smart dust. Uh, these are all are still right near the beginning as is neuromorphic computing and things like that. Quantum computing. These are very long, they, somebody's quantum computing is pretty long term. Uh, there's lots of re, uh, development has to be done there. All right, here we have, uh, coming back to 2018, we did the hype cycle. Uh, 2018 also has priority matrix, which has the same entries as the hype cycle. So we've already done most of these things. And we actually see a huge, um, actually a, a quite surprising, the number of five to 10 year transformational and high um, uh, benefit uh, entities there are. And not so much in the next two to five years, hardly anything moderate, nothing low. We hardly ever, we, by definition, they don't have low things that they wouldn't enter the, the uh, hype cycle. We have, yeah, it's sort of interesting, both types of self-driving cars are more than 10 years. We have um, cultured or virtual tissues. We have four-dimensional printing, but we have uh, autonomous robots, blockchain, carbon nanotube. We've already been through all of these, conversational AI platforms. We did not mention so far that in 2018, digital twins, that's been in for a while. And that points out the importance of making models or simulations of any um, ecosystem that you have. And we People do a lot of work of that in academia. Edge AI, we've stressed. We've stressed the importance of hardware that mimics biological functions. And we've, been, we've also pointed out we need digitalized ecosystems. So the workplace is an ecosystem which needs to be totally digitized. Meanwhile, we need to just really jump on the deep neural network bandwagon, use it wherever we can. And we might as well talk to our Google Assistant and Alexa and Cortana and people like that and uh, make certainly less sweet to us. Then we are gonna be happy. Here we have this priority matrix which um, plots benefit from low they're not likely to be many in low, because they wouldn't even bother to mention them if they were low, to transformational. Low, moderate, high transformational, and time from two to years to more than 10 years. So there's nothing for two years, two to five, that's quite a lot. Deep learning is meant to be uh, mainstream adoption. That's the, uh, uh, the slope of enlightenment or productivity plateau. Edge computing, IoT platform, machine learning. Those are all relevant to us, and they're all in the two to five years before they're mainstream. Five to 10 years, they think blockchain, cognitive computing, deep reinforcement learning, uh, digital twins, again, to, these are all, remember, transformational. These are gonna make incredible impact. Um, here we have drones, um, not meant to be quite so transformational, although they're pretty transformational. And quantum, I don't know why quantum computing is in transformation. If it actually worked, it would be incredibly transformational. I doubt if it will work. Well, it may work, who knows. Uh, it will take a long time to work well. All right, so that's sort of interesting to just look at it this way here, the brain-computer interface. Um, 
we sort of do some research on Martin Sweeney does in that area. He's up here with autonomous vehicles, self-driving vehicles. Here's 2016. Machine learning is two to five. Only one in two to five at that time. Um, blockchain is still in the same place and so on. IoT platform, I think, has now moved down to here. Um, so things move around in these uh, in these um, standard plots. They sort of interest. They all they've kept the same format. Hypercycle and priority matrix for a long time. And they, that's sort of good, the fact they kept it unchanged. It makes it easier to compare things. Uh, here is uh, <coughs> something irrelevant for clouds, data center infrastructure, which is sort of what a cloud is. And um, here you have um, management tools, the computational fluid dynamics analysis of the data center to see why it works, uh, high density racks. Uh, and so on. Edge computing is sitting here as uh, coming along and impacting the data center because the, the data is uh, coming from the edge. And the, most of the other things here are security and infrastructure, cooling, um, uh, energy harvesting, and so on. Tools to model a data center. That sort of goes in with the CFD analysis. So this is not so important, but it shows the types of technologies. Remember, a cloud is just, in inverted commas, a very, very, very well done data center. So this is relevant to clouds. Uh, you hear right at the bottom here, I see edge data center orchestration. How we get the edge to link to the data center. Um, and here is this. Um, Benefit to mainstream adoption here, this is sort of relevant to the fog, which are the small computer centers that manage the edge. Micro data centers, that you can get the advantage of a big data center in a small footprint. Um, otherwise, these are the same things as before as on the hype cycle, but uh, classified as the terms of benefit and time to, to make progress. <coughs> 